if you guys hadn't figured it out just yet, we're taking a look at an old 12 gauge shotgun for show and tell today. Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. I've got a J.C. Higgins Model 60. You guys have probably seen these before, seen them around in pawn shops and stuff. This one is Sears and Roebuck catalog number 583.600. Now that's not a serial number. To the best of my knowledge, this gun was manufactured in 1956. And of course, serial numbers weren't even a requirement until 1968. Also, if that research was true, and there's a lot of conflicting information on these shotguns, but if that research were true, this would have been among the last of the Model 60s produced in 1956. Shortly after that, they changed them over to the Model 66. Evidently, they made some changes and uh, changed them over to the Model 66. I don't even know what those changes were, but I thought it was pretty neat that this was probably one made in the last year of production for the Model 60. Now this particular shotgun, I looked up some old ads and some Sears ads online, and this particular shotgun was advertised for $99.95. This was a lightweight model. They also had a lightweight model without the vent rib on the barrel. This one has the ventilated rib. The one without the rib went for $94.95. And they also had a deluxe model that had a compensator and a variable choke out here. Now, I've seen more of those than I have the ones without the choke, but uh, they're, they're pretty common. Those went for $105.95 or 100, maybe it was $104.95. It, it wasn't much difference between this and the one with the compensator and variable choke. Now, to put that in perspective, a gallon of gas in 1956 was 22 cents. A first class postage stamp to mail a letter was three cents. So uh, it, it was a different time for sure. You could walk into a Sears, plop down a hundred bucks, walk out with a shotgun like this without sacrificing your privacy for a background check or anything like that and walk out and go on about your day. It, it was a different time for sure and Many would argue it was a better time. My friend Anthony normally keeps this shotgun plug to hold two in the magazine for hunting purposes, to keep it legal for hunting. But since I'm just out on the range today, I pulled his homemade plug out and it'll hold a total of four in the magazine plus your one in the chamber. Got a cross bolt style safety in front of the trigger. For those of you guys that may not know, Sears and Roebuck use the store brand name J.C. Higgins on a wide variety of sporting goods, not just firearms. They used that brand from 1908 up through 1962 when they phased it out in favor of the Ted Williams brand. And J.C. Higgins was actually based on a real life person, John Higgins. John moved to the United States from his home country of Ireland when he was in his late teens and found work with Sears and Roebuck in 1898. He worked his entire working career for Sears and retired in 1930. John Higgins didn't have a middle name. The, the marketing folks at Sears thought that J.C. Higgins would be more marketable than John Higgins, so that's what they went with. John died in 1950, but his name lives on in a lot of the products that are still in use today with the J.C. Higgins logo on them. I couldn't find very much information about John Higgins. I don't know if he was an avid outdoorsman or not. I'd like to know how he came to have his name on the entire line of outdoor sporting goods equipment though. I'm sure there's a story behind it, but I wasn't able to find it.
I was looking at some of the old ads from 1956 on this J.C. Higgins Model 60 shotgun, and they boasted that this thing was the fastest shotgun in the world, that you could get off five shots in one second. I thought it was kind of funny because to this very day, almost every maker of semi-automatic shotguns has made that claim at some time or another that they are the fastest shotgun in the world that still sells shotguns to this day. They also made the claim that this is the first and only, at that time, first and only semi-automatic shotgun with a stationary barrel and chamber. Now, I don't know if this was the first uh, stationary barrel semi-automatic shotgun or not, but that was the claim on some of the ads I read. These were known as the working man's shotgun and still are known as the working man's shotgun to this day. Uh, you still see a lot of these in use. These were made by High Standard Arms and branded J.C. Higgins for Sears and Roebuck. Uh, Sears and Roebuck didn't actually produce this shotgun. Uh, they had it produced for them by High Standard Arms. It has a pretty good reputation among hunters and target shooters alike. It's a gas operated shotgun so it spreads that recoil load out and this gun quickly developed a reputation as a soft shooter. It's two and three quarter inch chamber and it would cycle a wide variety of loads from light target loads to two and three quarter inch magnum hunting loads. So it had a, it was, it was fairly reliable. This one has a 28 inch barrel. Of course the vent rib, it's got a fixed modified choke. The gun weighs about seven and three quarter pounds. The gun has one weak spot, and that's this action bar. That's actually the reason that I have this shotgun today. These action bars are known for breaking out. The charging handle is actually on the action bar. Most shotgun designs today, we're used to seeing the charging handle attached to the bolt. In fact, a lot of people call it the bolt handle because of that. But over time, this charging handle will tear out the action bar. The action bar connects the action up here to the touches at the bottom of the gas piston. That's what works your action. But over time, working that bolt handle, you'll end up either tearing the bolt handle out and losing it, or tearing the bolt handle out and ruining your action bar. And that's what happened with this shotgun. That's why I've got it here today. A family friend, Anthony, dropped this off and, and had me fix it for him. What I ended up doing, these, that's such a common problem that you can't even find a used action bar anymore. You have to get a, a repro, and Numerich happens to make a repro, and it's an improved design. It should last longer. So I ordered him one of those Numerich repros and, and put it in here for him. It's actually, I mean, it, it's pretty simple, but it's, tough at the same time you do have to remove the magazine tube to get to the action bar and this magazine tube was frozen there pretty tight uh it took some took some work to get it out of there but i got it in there for him so while i had it here today i thought i'd do this video because i found it interesting i had seen these around i've never owned one and i i think it's just an interesting uh interesting piece of american history so that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy these show and tell style videos on these older used guns. Like these last couple videos I've posted. Because I've got a few more of them I need to get done. Thank you guys for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Guys I can't put it into words how much I appreciate you for helping me keep this channel rolling along. It means the world to me. So thank you guys. And I'll talk with y'all again soon.